Hey, this is John Gordon with Positive You. And today my guest is Michael Unbroken. Michael, how you doing? John, my man, I am so good. Super pumped to be here with you today, my friend. Fired up to have you. Talk about Unbroken, Michael Unbroken. What's, what's that all about? Yeah, you know, I, I was sitting a few years ago and I was laying in bed. It was about three o'clock in the morning, just gone through a breakup, had gotten a text that said, you're broken. And I was sitting there and I was like, you know what? That's not true, man. That's not who I am. That's not how I believe. That's not how I think. And I realized since I was a child, everyone has always called me broken for being homeless, for being poor, for being uneducated, for being the big kid in class. Everyone always said that, but that's never how I thought, John. And in that moment, it was like a lightning bolt from God right into my face. And I was like, I know what I'm supposed to do with the rest of my life. Wow. You basically said, I'm not broken. I'm unbroken. What does it mean to be unbroken? Yeah, man. You know, so here's the, here's the reality. We all have the ability to create the life that we have. When, when I was four years old, my mother, who was a drug addict and alcoholic, she actually cut off my right index finger. I've had multiple skin grafts, multiple surgeries. My stepfather, super abusive. The guy you, you pray is never your stepfather. Spent the majority of my childhood homeless. Got high for the first time when I was 12 drunk at 13, 15 expelled from school. And by the 20, by 25, I was 350 pounds smoking two packs a day and drinking myself to sleep. I was hiding from the truth. I was hiding from reality. I was hiding from my power. I was broken. I was letting everyone tell me you're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You're not capable enough. And I was living into that. And the truth about it was I just needed to get myself out of the matrix. And 12 years later, here I am talking to you. And I've coached thousands of people around the world. I've written a number one bestselling book. I've spoken on the biggest stages. And it's just one thing means to be unbroken, to take your identity back. And that's what I try to teach people every single day, because I am not an anomaly. I promise you, John, I am not special. I don't know anything you don't know. I just know the truth about life. When you make decisions about who you want to be, everything can be different. Talk about taking your identity back. Who are you? Who are we? What does it mean to have an identity? What is an identity all about? Yeah, I think identity is about creating the person that you believe you're capable of being through doing incredibly difficult things every single day that feel in alignment with what you want to do in the world. Identity, like when you grow up, think about this, John, you're third grade. Miss Smith comes up to you in class. You're sitting there coloring. You color the moon purple. She goes, John, how dare you color the moon purple? That's not what you do. And from that moment, you stop showing up as yourself because every single time you do, you're reminded of that. And there's pain and embarrassment and suffering. And then one day you realize that that doesn't serve you. And what you have to do is be willing to step into who it is that you are. And to do that, you have to get really clear about a few different things. First and foremost, I think it's values. If you don't know what you stand for, you will fall for everything. You need to know your wants, needs, interests, boundaries, and recognize how you want to operate in the world through your moral character. And ultimately, for me, identity is this. If I were to narrow it down, like I look at child abuse and trauma and the things we go through as this, your identity is stolen. You have to learn how to shut down for safety, right? One of the most dangerous things I could do as a kid was be myself. And that serves you until it doesn't serve you anymore. And when it stops serving you, you're faced with this incredible predicament. What do I do? How do I exist? I've never done this before. And when you become fully in tune with your identity, it, I believe this, it is the moment in which you only do what you want to do and you never do what you want to do. That means appeasing other people. And I think that's the key to identity. What was the shift for you in terms of you've been homeless, you've dealt with a lot of adversity, a lot of challenges. You said you were heavy. What was the shift? How did it happen? When did you finally say, okay, I'm going to be this. I want more. I believe I deserve more. When did that happen for you? And how did it happen? Like, was there a voice? Did you feel God speaking to you? Cause I felt God speaking to me on, on my journey. I felt him carrying me through the most difficult times of my life. What was it for you? So I'm 25 years old and I have no high school diploma, 
no college education. I'm working for a fortune 10 company, believe it or not, making six figures, having what I thought was the American dream until I realized that my life was a complete disaster. I was effectively standing inside of a house that I had set on fire, holding the matches. And one night I decided I was gonna attempt suicide. I was done, John. I thought the money was gonna solve everything. That's what everyone always said, but it didn't. And luckily it didn't go through. And the next day I'm laying in bed, it's 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm smoking a joint, eating chocolate cake, and watching the CrossFit games. And like, man, if that's not rock bottom, like, I don't know what is. And I walk into the bathroom and I look at myself in the mirror. And I remember being eight years old and the water company had come and turned our water off. And I, this was a blistering, hot Indiana summer day. Our water was always getting turned off, the electricity, the rent, we were getting evicted. I lived with 30 different families as a kid. And I went in the backyard and I'd grab this little blue bucket and I walk across the street to our neighbor's house. I turn on the spigot on the side of their house. And for the first time in my life, I steal water. And I said to myself, when I'm a grown up, this is not going to be my life. Financially, it wasn't. But in every other way, I was still that hurt, lost little boy. And as I stood there in front of that mirror, having this memory, I asked myself, what are you willing to do to have the life that you want to have? And the words, no excuses, just results started reverberating through my body. And it set me on this trajectory to get out of my own way, to heal from the past and ultimately to become the hero of my own story. Now, of course, that came through a tremendous amount of tumultuous experiences, but ultimately it's led me to where I am today. And if I were to summarize it, John, the most simplified way to put this is I was tired of my own crap. That's good. How'd you go from, you know, homeless and not getting a, you know, a college degree to this great job? How did that happen where you were working for, you know, a, a business, a company making great money? How did that happen? Yeah. So I recognized something really important when I was about 18 years old. I have a fam I have family in prison for life. I've been in handcuffs many times. And as of today, my three childhood best friends have been murdered. Hmm. We were selling drugs. We were breaking into houses. We were stealing cars. I got kicked out of school. I saw the path, man. And my plan was this. Don't die. Join the Marine Corps. That's it. I wanted to be a Marine Corps scout sniper, but I hurt my knee my senior year of high school, couldn't pass MEPS. I was stuck. I had no idea what to do. The only thing that I knew is if I kept going where I was going, it was game over. And so I said to myself, I want to make $100,000 a year legally. Legally. This was so important, John. You have no idea, man. And, and I started learning skills. I learned how to write resumes and cover letters and interviews. And I landed a job at 18 and a half working for a fast food restaurant, quickly became a general manager in training. I was in leadership with 52 people under me as a baby. And in that, I just kept moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. One day, one of my friends says, hey, I got a job with this insurance company. Boom. My mind was blown, dude. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know that people from where I was from could have jobs like that. And I said, that's the marker. That's how I get to six figures. Fast forward a year later, sure enough, that's what I did. And so it was just, I got really clear on the goal. The only thing that I wish in retrospect that I would have applied at that time was having clarity around a goal that would have made my life better. That wasn't just monetary. And so I learned a brilliant lesson in that, but ultimately it was just, I was so crystal clear about what I wanted and nothing was going to stop me. Talk about now you've had all the success. What's your vision? What's your purpose? What are you all about now? Uh, clarity. Again, everything. My number one mission in life, period. My only mission is life is to end generational trauma in my lifetime through education and information so that other children don't have stories like I just told you. 
And that is a by any means necessary way. And so whether it's speaking on stages or podcasts or interviews or writing books or giving away everything I know for free, I don't care. It's about changing the world and leaving a legacy. Because John, the only thing that I'm terrified in my life of, the only fear I have is that on my deathbed, I'll look back at all this and say, I wish I would have done more. And so everything that I do is about giving, man, because I know, like, I believe it's true. We all have the ability to be great, but sometimes we just need that one up. We need that hand held out. We need support. And if I can help people from 99% of the pitfalls I've been through, like, I'm going to feel like I really impacted the world. That's awesome. Talk about your book. That's a best-selling book. Yeah. So I wrote Think Unbroken as the book that I needed when I really started my healing journey. So it's Think Unbroken understanding and overcoming childhood trauma. And it's not about me, right? The preface is for context, right? Of course. But the rest of the book is practical tips and tools. It's part journal. It's part personal development, part coaching. It's a book that's about being a companion for you, especially if you're just beginning this journey. And what's really fascinating, man, I got turned down by every publisher, every agent, half of them didn't reply three and a half, almost four years ago. Now, everyone was just like, this isn't something we want to carry or talk about. And I was like, that's part of the problem. And so I said, I'm going to self publish it. And I did it. And it's went to number one, it sold thousands of copies. But here's what's fascinating, man. There's no reviews. Nobody posts it online. Nobody shares it because it, child abuse is still the elephant in the room in this country, in the world. And like, I hate to be one of the people up here speaking about it. I wish I could do anything else on the planet, but I can't. And this is my calling. And so I'm going to kick down every door till we start changing the narrative, man. Michael, it's so great you're doing that. It's so great. This is your mission because we know so many kids, so many adults now were kids and they suffered abuse. We know that men, it's like one in three now, one in three men suffer sexual abuse when, when they're young. We know that a lot of young women, young girls suffer sexual abuse. So many people suffer childhood traumas and we're seeing the result of that. We're seeing, unfortunately, the bad fruit of that when they're older and the pain and how that unleashes and unravels and releases in their life. And what it does to their life and they need healing right people need healing people need to know that it's not something you really overcome right it's something you move through it's something you heal and so i think it's a great mission that you're on it's, it's an incredible mission and i think more and more people are talking about it and probably since you wrote the book like you're ahead of the game you're at the forefront of it you're a pioneer in this but it seems like now more and more are starting to talk about it and willing to talk about it and they'll talk about as, hey, I have this trauma. And they don't really go into specifics, but we do talk about trauma and releasing trauma, right? There's, there's the um, MDRT therapy that helps release bodily trauma. Are you aware of that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, I've done EMDR, CBT. Oh, NLP. EMDR. That's what it is. I've, EMDR. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, and, and I think that the more we can acknowledge it, and, you know, here's the reality. We're, we're the sum total of all of our experiences in life. And that means... Everything we've ever gone through has led up until this moment. And to be dismissive of the fact that you'd be impacted by your past, I think is super dangerous. And so I love the fact that like we have people like you who are willing to have the conversation. We have people around the world who are stepping up. We have people who are finally saying, look, enough. We have to change the narrative on this. Like it's it's incredible to me the fact that it's taken this long. But when you recognize the impact of generational trauma, it's like, it's going to take us generations to heal this, right? And that's okay. But that means that one day somebody will pick up my book or listen to my podcast or find one of my YouTube videos and be like, why did this person make this? This doesn't even make sense. And so as long as I can move towards that dream and that goal, and we can continue to empower each other and not tear each other down, like, man, it's going to be beautiful what we're going to do in this world. That's so good. That's so amazing. Yeah. Here's a book that I have just recently. And it's what happened to you. I'm, I'm sure you've seen this book. Oprah's yeah, a big a part book. of it. It just talks about conversations on trauma, resilience, and, and healing. And they talk about the fact that what happened to you, it's not who you are. The trauma is not you. It's an event. It's not a definition. It's not who you are. And I love that you talked about early on identity. Talk about trauma and then reclaiming your identity. Talk about that. Yeah. You know, I, I think the, the hardest real truth about 
trauma is it's not the experience. And this is even my experience and having some really dark things happen to me. The, the moment was never what I tied on to. It was all the things from the moment on. And, and I think that's where you get stuck. That's where your back gets put against the wall and you don't know how to show up. You don't know how to be, you don't know how to exist. And, and so much of it is taken from you. Like it's stripped from you. It's you're put in this position where the very first thing that you understand about humanity is it's unsafe. And so think about this. You start operating in the world like that. You become an emotional recluse. There was a period of time, 15 years, I didn't cry, John. I turned off. I became a robot because it was safe. Now there's this Adidas commercial with this old guy escaping and running. And I'm just like in tears, right? <laughs> and that's part of the reclamation. You reconcile the truth about life. I think about trauma like this. You have this life and it's this beautiful house. And every single day you go outside, there's trash in your front yard. Well, it's not your trash, but it is your yard. And that's what I think about trauma and reclaiming and taking your identity back is getting that trash out of there, working through it, putting it where it needs to go and starting to show up for yourself day in and day out. And you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days, but understanding and recognizing you're having a human experience and you've never done this thing that you're trying to do before. John, we've never had this conversation before. It's okay. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to mess up. You're going to do the thing 10 years later, you promised you would never do again. And it's like, if you can have some empathy and grace and patience in your life while simultaneously, and this is where it's interesting, simultaneously holding yourself accountable while being incredibly determined and disciplined, you will create yourself sitting here in front of you right now. And this is not to be crass using myself in the third person, but to make a point, the Michael sitting here right now is a realization of the idea of the person I thought I could be 10 years ago. Hmm. And the person that I will be in 20 years from now is who I'm thinking about being today. And that's what it's about. Just getting crystal clear about who you are and what you want and moving towards it and recognizing that in that process, you're going to have to give something up. And for many of us, it's playing the victim. Mm -hmm. And for others, it's the impact. And for the rest, it's just simply looking at your life and saying, what am I willing to let go of? to have what I want to have. Isn't it also letting go of the shame and the guilt that you may carry with you along the way so that you can move forward to create the life you were born to live? 100%. I would walk around so full of shame as a child because I wet the bed and I couldn't shower because I was covered in bruises because I was the poorest kid along with my brothers of the poorest kids in the whole school. I carried the shame of being an orphan. I carried the shame of impacting my neighborhood negatively by selling drugs and hurting people and breaking into houses. I carried the shame of being literally one of the only kids to not graduate from one of the worst high schools in America, according to Harris Polls and the dropout factory list. I carried shame for a long time, brother. That's what I had to give up. Will you let go of it? and recognize your past does not define you. Does it inform you? Yes, of course it does. But look, through those experiences and those discoveries, I am who I am today, and so are the people that we have helped in this journey. But you have to be willing to face it, and that's the first thing. You have to be willing to go stand in front of that mirror and say, I deserve more, and recognize this, the truth about it. That thing that you want, that thing that you believe you deserve, nobody's handing it to you. There is no Disney moment and nobody's coming to save you. If you want it, you're going to have to earn every inch, but you can have support along the way and you can have companionship along the way, but you have to be willing to ask for help. Michael, so good. Michael Unbroken, think Unbroken. I think that was a mic drop moment. Hey, really appreciate having you on Positive University. Your story is incredible. The work you're doing is incredible. And talking about trauma the way you are is a gift. I don't think everyone's going to read this really thick book on, on what happened to you. It's a long read. It's a hard read. It's a difficult read. I think a book like yours that really uh, resonates with people and, and is a, a simple read for people to take with them and to understand and to, to move through and then to take action and to think differently. That's what it's all about. So, Michael, thank you so much. Any last words you want to share before we say goodbye? Man, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity. It means the world to me. You now are a part of my mission, and I'm so grateful for you, my friend. Thank you. Michael, what's your website? 
Everyone can just go to thinkunbrokenpodcast.com or look up Think Unbroken Podcast on all the things. Thinkunbrokenpodcast.com. Michael, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.